Let's return now to Israel's war on Hamas. Uh, joining me now is Nora Erekat, a human rights attorney and associate professor at Rutgers University in New Brunswick. She's uh, served as legal counsel to the US House of Representatives and as a legal advocate for Palestinian refugee rights at the United States. Uh, thanks very much for joining us. Um, we've just seen Anthony Blinken, US Secretary of State, uh, finish his uh, second trip uh, to the region. Uh, huge dip diplomatic efforts going on at the moment. In terms of the influence of US in all of this and, and what he's been able to achieve. How do you think he's going? And we heard from Mark Lowen just now talking about how Netanyahu is now considering what he called um, little tactical pauses to allow aid in. Is that, do you think that would have been down to Anthony Blinken? I think that it's universally agreed that there is a consensus that the Secretary Blinken's tour, recent visit to the region is a blunderous failure. All the United States has done has given a green light to uh, to Israel, a nuclear power, the only nuclear power in the Middle East, to pummel a besieged population of 2.2 million Palestinians. We are on day 32, where over 10,000 Palestinians have been killed, 16 hospitals have been destroyed, where Israel recently even shot, after denying fuel to the hospitals, shot the solar powers, solar panels on the Al-Auda hospital, has not achieved any of its military objectives. Your last guest was saying that this is the beginning of war. This is not a war, nor is it a war against Hamas. This is a genocidal campaign targeting the Palestinian people, attacking the conditions of life with the intent to diminish their ability to survive. Wait. This is a violation of the Genocide Convention. Secretary Blinken um, has demonstrated a failure in leadership, and we are now seeing that the United States is about to shift precisely because they're putting the world on the edge of a, a regional uh, war. Well, Israel obviously denies uh, what your accusations there of genocide, and we've heard them talk about how uh, Hamas waged a war on them, and they are responding, and this is the, them showing their right to protect themselves and try to uh, bring back security to their country. And they blame Hamas for, they blame Hamas for no, what is going no, on in no terms country. of... No country has ever admitted to committing genocide. The U.S. has still not admitted that it committed genocide against the indigenous peoples on the lands where it established its sovereignty. To sit here and tell us what Israel is saying, despite what the facts demonstrate, the facts are clear. There is no clear target. What Israel has said is that they are willing to destroy the entirety of the population in the Gaza Strip, 2.2 million Palestinians, is children, families, schools, Israel, in order is, to Israel would, Hamas, uh, is, Israel would argue that achieved. it is telling people to leave. It's giving them warnings of bombardments. It's telling to people to, to leave the areas before to where does, they attack to where them. where do people leave? Ma'am, where do people leave? Please. This is, we are on day 32. News agencies need to start to be more critical of an ongoing genocidal campaign right before our eyes. They are attacking hospitals, schools. Well, well, they, they are saying that, that Hamas is, is using hiding underneath shields. those hospitals and using, 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 using its people. Have you verified that? Has anyone verified that? I'm Israel telling you, I'm just telling you what Israel would in. argue against what you're saying. They are saying that Hamas is is using hospitals, and that's why they are targeting those areas because they are targeting Hamas fighters. And if we we, we move on then to the, to the United Nations, because obviously you've got experience uh, within the United Nations as well. In terms of its ability to influence proceedings in this, how do you rate its efforts so far? I mean, we've had this resolution from the General Assembly set calling for a ceasefire, but as we know, they they're not binding those resolutions. It's the Security Council ones that are. So well, how do you feel about the United Nations role in all of this? The United Nations has a critical role to play under its Chapter 7 authorities. And yet, as we've seen, the U.S. is using its veto power in order to undermine the will of the international community to impose an immediate ceasefire. I thought it very strange that you're challenging me far more than you challenged the speaker before me. On your point about hospitals, as journalists, we should examine that Israel has used the talking point about hospitals in its invasion of Gaza in 2008, in 2012, in 2014, in its invasion in Lebanon in 2006. None of those claims have been verified. Right now, there are no foreign journalists in the region because Israel does not allow them in. And so, so, so what here, is the answer, though? Rather, what is your rather answer than to this challenge situation? the 
these and ask Israel to demonstrate that in fact they're being used as human shields. Instead, we're, we're, we're here discussing uh, state propaganda and talking points. Meanwhile, the evidence speaks for itself. 10,000 Palestinians have been killed on day 32, and Israel is now saying that its war is just starting. To what end? Is the international community willing to sacrifice 2.2 million people in order for Israel to achieve its stated goals? This cannot be achieved through a military solution. Only a diplomatic solution is possible. And at this point, we all need to be insisting upon a ceasefire. Genocide is not legitimate warfare. It is a jus cogens norm. It is never acceptable as a coercive tactic like slavery is not accepted, like torture okay. is not accepted. And yet here we are making room for this because we're failing to exercise adequate scrutiny. Okay. Well, thanks very much for your time, Nora Erekat, the human rights attorney. Thank you very much for joining us.